Hey everybody, welcome back to the next guest. I'm your host, Matt. And you're joined by me, Tyler. Yeah, hey. He still didn't do it right, but it's all right. Whatever. I'll, I'll never do it right, okay? It, <laughs> hey, you get to mess it up, I get to mess it up too, okay? No, 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 no. that's not how this works. I get to mess it up. You're supposed to be the perfect one in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> uh, uh, thanks, thanks, Dylan, for the super chat. I appreciate that. Uh, a, super, a super chat on the podcast. I don't even know what to do with that. I appreciate that, though. Mm -hmm. Um... If you would like to watch live, we are going to be streaming this pro now probably every week. Uh, we were originally going to do it every other week, but at this point, who cares? Let's just do it. You know what? Let's do it. Stream. So it's going to be live every Thursday at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. That's 2 p.m. Central Time. Uh, if you're in other time zones, you'll have to do that math yourself because that's way beyond me. Uh, oh, seriously. come on. You don't have the spare time just to do math for, like, everyone across the globe? Come they on. make time calculators for that shit. I ain't going any <laughs> further than that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Thursdays, 3 p.m. Uh, oh. Eastern Time, uh, we record f for... Uh, we usually go live about 15 to 20 minutes before uh, we start recording. So if we start re if we start going live at 3 o'clock, we usually don't start recording until 3.20. And then we usually bullshit for an hour or so. Mm -hmm. Some some Sometimes, I say sometimes because we have made it under an hour of record time twice in the last 30 episodes. So, Which is impressive for us. It is impressive. I'm very proud of us. Uh, we've also hit hour and 20 minutes a couple times, but I don't think we've ever made it an hour and a half. Uh, that should be definitely should be something we should uh, try out. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, so just a story. I mean, just because it popped in my head. Uh, as everybody knows, I do, do another podcast. It's about movies, but originally it was about technology and gaming and stuff like that because I had hopes and dreams of being a technology blogger, which is, you know, I was young and stupid. Uh, but anyways, we started a podcast in 2009 and it slowly transitioned to other things. But one of the times we decided to talk about games and we ended up podcasting for four hours. Uh, we started at like nine o'clock at night. We were done at like one o'clock. And that, that we, that's something we still talk about from time to time because it's kind of gone down in like <laughs> legend. We've done like 450 episodes of that show, by the way. Um, nobody watches it. Like nobody listens to it. <laughs> like I get five, like five listens to that thing all the time. But it's okay because it's just the three of us dudes talking about movies now anyways well see here's the thing i don't even know where to find it is it is it in the description uh no i don't i don't link to it anyways it's probably why nobody listens to it but um, yeah probably why <laughs> so the thing is i don't edit it at all like i have zero editing to do on that at all i just take the recorded podcast and pipe it into uh anchor so it's called the three cast and like i said uh we've been doing it for a long time it's fun uh we don't do it very often anymore because the other two guys are like have actual lives and do uh, things with family and stuff like that. Such boring. Losers. I mean, seriously, yeah. I don't know what's wrong with them. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so, uh, Tyler, what have you been doing this week? Um, I've had a, a just a crazy week with work and um, family stuff. Uh, we've been going to family parties and um, it's, it's just pe like people getting married, engaged, all that crap which is nice and everything, but you know, that, that involves a lot of family like parties and getting together with parts of the family that, you know, you might not necessarily enjoy spending a lot of your time with, but never, nevertheless, uh, it, it's, it's been a good week there. Uh, so the local subway, which is one of the five shops in town here. Um, we got bought out by another, um, guy who's, in town he owns the store like right down near us and uh he's gonna be pumping in money to the store and actually giving people like i don't know money to where they actually want to be there and care about you know just keeping the store clean which is like literally the only thing you have to do because let's be honest slapping meat and cheese on a sub is not a necessarily a difficult skill but um yeah, it, so like I don't that's know. From good. some of my experiences going to to subways, it must be pretty hard because they always get something wrong. <laughs> oh, dude. Well, it, and it's seen a lot of cases. Like the reason why is subway. A lot of subways, like the it's up to the actual owner on what they pay, and 
uh, because franchising a subway is expensive, a lot of the owners don't invest money in the actual employees there. Like that's where they cheap out. That's where they save all their money. And it doesn't matter how easy the job is. Um, if, if your owner makes it pretty clear, not only in pay, but in the way that they talk with you, that you're not worth jack shit to them. You don't really take even cleaning half seriously. Cause it's like, well, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I could literally quit this and walk five minutes down the street and have a job in no time. So yeah, a, a lot of subways, that's the case. So, uh, no one, no one cares, but when you have people who just genuinely just need something to do, you know, for extra steady income while they do other stuff. Um, those are the ones where like, if you can get a subway staff with those people, you'll have a clean as hell subway and get a sub that comes with exactly what you want on it, which is mind blowing. Oh, you mean the person who makes your subs not actually going to be having Apple earbuds in their, their ears so they can't actually hear what it, you're ordering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That type of stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we should just let everybody know that Buddy's in the background crying. He's not being abused yes. anyway. He's just trying to have the window opened. Uh, yeah, he wants the window open bad, and he whines a whole bunch before he goes to sleep because he doesn't want to go to sleep, but he very much will. Uh, he has definitely been exercised. Uh, he just also he knows that I'm talking, which means he wants attention. Um, so if it was up to him, he would be hopping up, like trying to get in my lap, which he is not a lap dog whatsoever and try to show himself off. So, but, you, <laughs> so you tried KDE. Is that what you're, <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, so, uh, to finish it off with, uh, uh, I'm going back into KDE and seeing if I can use it as a daily driver, um, which is interesting. Uh, I'm really liking it so far, um, but it needs a lot more tweaks and I can do a lot more with it to make it much nicer to where hopefully I'll actually stick with it. Are you going to try one of the tiling scripts? Uh, no, no. Uh, Cause I'd like, uh, I like, to be honest, if I'm going to use a floating window manager, I'm going to use all the like niceties of a floating window manager, like having wobbly as hell windows and all, all of that, like, you know, goofy, fancy stuff, um, which I, I actually like, I, I, I do like wobbly windows and stuff, but I mean, tiling is also super nice. So, all right. In the chat, they're asking about my Emacs experience. You'll just have to wait for a video on that. I'm sorry about that. It's a, <laughs> that's going to be an entire video on its own. Um, I'm sure you're going to have plenty of nice things to say. Uh, uh, astonishingly, I probably not. <laughs> Anyways, um, so and you and obviously you've been playing zero AD. So. Uh, yeah. A lot. Yeah. If, if you want to see them, I mean, I keep coming back to this, and I'm sure Tyler's going to eventually get sick of me making fun of him about it, but if you <laughs> go to, onto his channel, he has a 10-hour stream of him playing Zero AD. And mm -hmm. it, the entire video it, of is of him making the same face, because he's, he, he's apparently playing it on a monitor that was off to w one of his sides, and he was just staring at it for 10 hours, making the most hilarious faces. Uh, one of those things I, I screenshotted, and, and then uh, somebody else in your Discord started making these awesome memes for them. So yep. yeah, I was good. I was very distracted and didn't realize that I hadn't changed the like uh, OBS source to where you could see the game. So you're just staring at my face for an obscenely long time. And... The best part is, is now my Discord is filled with memes. Oh, it's filled great. With memes. I think it's definitely going to be going viral. Um, and uh, <laughs> it's just so good. Anyways, uh, so um, for me, I've had a bad week. Um, did you know that getting a Wi-Fi dongle working on Linux is fucking the most torturous experience you'll ever experience? I mean, it's just the, the it, it it's so stupid. <coughs> Excuse me. It's so bad. I've got a cold. <laughs> um, anyway, so I got on. So we're gonna be talk. We're gonna talk about the GitLab challenge later on. But the, I wanted to do the challenge 
on an actual like desktop computer, not a laptop. Because I didn't want my that laptop moves every time to time, and I just wanted it to be something that was stationary. So I hauled out a old desktop that I had that just needed a hard drive. So I bought a hard drive. And I got it in here, set up, and used this old ass HP monitor, which you see behind me. It's a, like a twenty inch monitor. It has a it has a, a resolution of something like uh, eleven twenty by eight sixty or something. It's the weirdest fucking resolution I've ever seen. Uh, but anyways, it's perfectly fine. It has the huge ass bezels on it. But I got it all set up, and I was really proud of myself because the computer still works and everything, even though it hasn't been turned on in a couple years. Um, it was good. Uh. And then, this was like Sunday-ish, I think it was Sunday when I messaged you, told you that uh, I was having, I, I got it all set up, but realized that the fucking computer did not have Wi-Fi. Like, mm-hmm. there was no Wi-Fi on it. Um, so, I got onto Amazon, subscribed to Amazon Prime, so I didn't have to pay for uh, a shit ton for shipping. Um, and I uh, bought a Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi dongle that said explicitly that it worked with Linux. Okay, it said it worked for Linux. The only problem is it said it worked with Linux up to kernel 4. something or the other. And nobody still uses Linux kernel 4. something or the other, unless you're like in the enterprise or something. It's fucking stupid. Use a more modern kernel. It's not going to kill you. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, I, I, but still, I figured if it worked with Linux kernel 4. Point something, it would probably work with Linux 5. something. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, oh, I was really wrong. It won't even recognize it as plugged in. So, uh, I like I was like, well, maybe they've updated the drivers because they sent you, you know, those like those mini CDs. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I sent one of those mini CDs in the box that had the drivers on it, and it even had a Linux driver right on it. And so I, you know. They they also had a website, so I went to the website and tried to go through and download the driver from there. No dice, it did not work. So I sent the fucker back and got a different one. This one said it also worked with Linux up to Linux uh, kernel 5.13 or something. So I was like, this one has to work. It was also double the fucking price. So we went from $20 to $40. Uh, still won't work. So, uh, long story short, what I ended up doing, which I should have just done in the first place, was I have a, like a Wi-Fi mesh router system. So I, had th- I have three uh, mesh routers all over the house. I just took one of the mesh points out of the kitchen and brought it in here. So now I have two mesh points in my room, in this room, and but the mesh points have a ethernet out on them so that they can, you can hook physically up to them if you want to. So that's how I'm getting internet to that computer. And that took multiple days because I kept waiting for shipping and stuff like that for the second one. And uh, it, I finally got Wi-Fi like Tuesday-ish. I think it was like Tuesday-ish. I finally got the uh, internet up and running, and I installed uh, Gruda on there then, um, and then I'll talk more about what happened after that when we start talking about the GitLab challenge and we can bitch about the GitLab thing. Uh, but that was the hardware challenges. Um, I also did some scripting, which I was very proud of, um, and I switched to Emacs. Fuck my life. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> so Why would why would you leave the heaven that is vid- uh because I hate myself and have uh, this stupid need to make YouTube videos about things that <laughs> other people seem to like. I mean, <laughs> as long as you acknowledge it, okay. As, as long as you acknowledge the self hatred, it's no, okay. He, he, here's what it is: I have a hero worship of DistroTube, and uh, he likes Xmonad, so I have to like like Xmonad, and he likes Emacs, so I have to like Emacs. And I, I'm stalking DistroTube. That's what happens. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, the funny part is, is if you wanted to be d- just like DT, I, I, I don't think either one of us could actually pull everything DT uses. Because, like, I just, I, I've tried Doom Emacs. I just, Finn, it was just better, man. Oh, I, I told you I'd do that. Uh, I, I don't know if it was right when we started going live or, like, right before it, but I hit my microphone with my hat, and I was like, damn it, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that <laughs> again. This stream happens all the time. Uh, that's okay. You haven't done nothing until you saw Matt bring out the players in order to get the damn <laughs> microphone back on center. <laughs> Well, because if I spin it, the whole thing comes unscrewed, so I had to hold on to this. To, it's stupid. Anyways, uh, <laughs> um, 
So that is uh, what we've done in Linux this week. If you want to get in contact with us for various reasons, if you'd like to stalk us instead of stalk DistroTube, I mean, we always prefer fans. So we could use some fangirls and fanboys. It's uh, it's a thing. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can subscribe to all of our audio feeds and stuff like that at the LinuxCast.org. Again, just because it's become tradition, eventually that will be a website. Um. But don't hold your breath. If you want to get in contact via uh, email, you can do so. Email at the linuxcast.org. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I'll thank all of our patrons at the end of the show. And you can follow Tyler, who goes by Zany on the internet, on YouTube and Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description below or in the show notes. Uh, he is, like, that close to 1,000 subscribers. Like, I posted on the community page, and we got him, like, 20 more subscribers that day. That was fun. Uh, mm -hmm. So we need to... I mean, he's, like, this close. Come on. If you haven't already, go subscribe to Tyler. It's fantastic. All of his... Especially if you enjoy, like, 12-hour streams of him doing inane things, like playing Zero AD or ricing or uh bitching about microsoft for three or four hours go subscribe to him those links again will be in the video description i don't think that they're in the description of the live stream so i apologize for that uh youtube is fucking around with the live stream back end right now and there was no live thing like there was no thing that popped up to like change the settings of the stream like there normally is it just went fucking live like it like it didn't even like it never the, happens like, it didn't even let me change the title of the of the stream it's like using a, a title that was before and it was it was really weird it's fucking stupid anyways you can also subscribe to us on youtube where i publish videos pretty much every day at the linux i always fuck up this last line i don't know why i fuck up the last line anyways subscribe to us on youtube youtube.com slash linuxcast that was really good right up until that last line i always mess up the last line i don't know why and somebody said about pre-recording the intro what i should pre-record is the fucking contact information because then i wouldn't have to do it every week <laughs> <laughs> this is by far the worst part of the fucking podcast all right anyways so tyler I hate your stinking guts, and I hope you drown in a sea of manure. Uh, <laughs> seriously, I don't like you anymore. Friendship over. Uh. So, so uh, I, I'm taking that as you had a great experience trying to get get lava, and you oh, love I, this week. I just had a fucking good ass time. I, it was so much fun. I just want to come to wherever you live. I'm not going to dox you. I don't hate you that much. And strangle you with Buddy's tail. <laughs> <laughs> poor Buddy. <laughs> poor, in that scenario, I am said poor Buddy, not poor Tyler, by the way. <laughs> as, as you should have. Uh, okay. Uh, so you're probably wondering what we're talking about. What we're talking about is, so every... 10 episodes or so, we issue, issue ourselves a challenge. Last time it was a bash challenge, and I have to say that was much more enjoyable. Um, <laughs> this time it was Tyler's turn, and it turns out he's really bad at choosing challenges. I'm going to go on about this for a long time because it was a horrible experience. Uh, but this time it was a GitLab challenge. So Tyler, quickly, explain to us what the challenge was. Very simply put, we had to self-host... GitLab, either through something like a VPS, like DigitalOcean, or something like that, or on a home machine, and locally host your own GitLab instance. I'm even worse, I'm even more mad at you right now, because I didn't even think about the fucking VPS option. Because you you, what I could have done was cheated like the cheater that I am and opened up a Linode account and hit the one-click install for GitLab. Because mm -hmm. you know they mm -hmm. have that. Yeah. Oh, man, I should have done that. <laughs> uh, all right, so before we get into the woes of my existence, why don't we talk about you and your experience first? Thing? So this was your challenge. Okay. Um, so uh, I, I mentioned it to you before that lied to you. Uh, again, I don't know if this was part of the very beginning of the live stream, but Matt, being so generous, has already forgiven me not knowing what I lied about. Um, but so... Uh, I, I believe it was, I believe it was yesterday. Uh, I think you texted me while I was at work, um, and we were chatting about it. I do. That. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, you you told me you, you texted me and you were like, "Look, um, I like I'm. It's not going well. I've obviously put it off towards the last minute." Which you're like, 
you're like, I told you this was going to happen. And I mean, I'm pretty much the same way I procrastinate. And, um, I wanted to like, I thought I would scare you and be like, like, like make you think like, Oh, Oh shit. Like if he's already got everything down, like it's great. I, I had gotten like Docker like installed and I had already seen uh, and watched a tutorial on how to do it in 25 minutes. Now, I texted you and told you, yeah, everything's going good. I've already got it working. Like all of that <laughs> shit. I was totally lying. I did not have it up and running. I had put it off towards the last minute as well. Um, but I, I figured I'd throw you off. Like, like make you, like make you think like, oh shit, like, oh, this is not going to be good. And because since I had already watched the tutorial of how to do it in 25 minutes, I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. Problem. So, um, I go home and before I start playing zero AD with Dylan, um, we, we spend, I think it took us about 15 minutes, got Docker installed, uh, installed GitLab for Docker and then ran it. Um, and, uh, it took us about another 10 minutes to get, uh, cause you got to give Docker some flags when you run uh, your container, uh, to limit its CPU usage and Ram usage. Otherwise it'll try and take up as much as it can. Um, because it doesn't have any limits put on it. So uh, I limited, because uh, what, what my plan was, was to run the um, Docker instance from my main desktop here, since it's always on at home. Um, and it holds my dot files, and so does all of my laptops. So the plan was, was run the Docker container from my home desktop, and then be able to you know, push all of my stuff, like all, all of my dot files, to that repository on this main PC and then eventually push it off to the internet or just, I mean, the main thing is having just a local, like easy repository to rely on no matter what, even if my internet's down, I'll be able to get my dot files. Um, you know, just, just cause, and also any other repositories I want to work on. Bro, I got it up and running and I was like, okay, this is all good. We played zero AD, like a ton last night and fell asleep. And the goal was to wake up early this morning and then just, just, you know, set up the repository, push the dot files up there, do all that stuff. I, for one slept in till about like 1245 ish, uh, today, which is not good, not good. And then also cannot get the Docker. I cannot be, I cannot access the GitLab like Docker container from anywhere from the main pc pc from my other machines i i just can't find it so i can can talk to you about how how easy it was to get gitlab installed and everything through docker and get it running however using it has been a nightmare i can't figure it out and i have like no time to which is fantastic so, tell me about how your experience has been. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Okay, so we, t we talked about the hardware problem. Once I got all that out of the way, which was like Tuesday, I was like, you want to, I need a break from this challenge. Like, I know the, the, the podcast is coming up in two days time, but I needed to take a day off. So I did. And that led me to Wednesday, which was yesterday. So I texted you last night and told you I hadn't even started yet. Like I, I, I think I told you I got the tutorial up and that was it, which is true. I had the tutorial up. I still have the tutorial up on that computer right now. You can barely see it. It's right there. Um, or one of the tutorials I've tried several tutorials. So starting last night, probably around seven thirty, eight o'clock or so my time, uh, I started and uh, the first thing that I realized was that doing it on Arch Linux was not great because there's no official support for Arch Linux in for GitLab. There's just not. Uh, it has been packaged for Arch Linux. Somebody else did it, but it's not official. Um, and there is documentation for it, but it's on the Arch Wiki. And if you know, the Arch Wiki is great. We go on and on about how great the Arch Wiki is. 
Uh, but sometimes the arch wiki gets in its way where it just assumes that you know exactly what you're doing and it skips steps that are supposedly obvious for advanced users. And um, when you're talking about something like uh, do you know Docker or uh, literally installing GitLab or something like that, you can't ex you can't skip essential steps because you still have to know those steps that are there in order for them to happen. So uh, doing it on Arch was just a no-go. It just did not work. Um, I tried at that point because you want, you talked about the Docker and Docker Hub. And so I was like, you know, I'll try Docker. And uh, that was just a mess. I couldn't get Docker installed. I don't know what was going on. And Garuda, I had Garuda at that point on that computer. And uh, it, it kept giving me these stupid errors. So I was like, you want? There are just a ton of, of tutorials out there on how to do this on Ubuntu. So I was like, you want what? I have an Ubuntu USB key that has the LTS on it. So I'll install Ubuntu on that computer. It, it took, you know, 10 minutes, you know, it's whatever. Uh, and uh, so I did that and I decided I'll, I'm, I'm going to ignore Docker for a minute because I've never used Docker in my entire life. Like, I can spell it. That was about as far <laughs> as I ever got into Docker. Yeah. So I, like, I, I understand, I understand what Docker is, but mm -hmm. I never, like I said, I've never used it and didn't know how to install it, didn't know how to do things in it. Like, I never, you never use it. So I was like, I'm gonna ignore that because I don't. There's no sense trying to have to learn two different things, you know. So I'm just gonna install uh, GitLab using their script because they have a script to install using several different dependencies on Ubuntu. The problem is their script was written for 21.04, not 20.04. And 20.04, which is the fucking LTS, by the way, it's the one that's the most used Ubuntu distribution flavor out there, um, you know, isn't supported by the script. So I kept running it and running it, and the, the script kept coming out with an error when I was trying to add the repository for GitLab. And it tells you what to do. It tells you to go into the script and change a couple of variables, because it's just a bash script. Uh, I did that, and it still can work. Like, I did this, it was like hours and hours of trying to troubleshoot this, because I kept going in. Many other people have had the same problem, because they write their script based on one version of Ubuntu, not something that will work on many different versions of Ubuntu, and why they don't just leave it as the LTS, I don't know. It's the dumbest thing, because nobody, I mean, relatively to the number of people who use the LTS, the number of people who use those interim releases is very small. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was like, screw it, I will update, go from Focal Focus, which I think is the 21 the 2004 LTS, I think that's what the name was, it doesn't matter. I'll update from 20.04 to 21.04, which is what the script supports. Um, Ubuntu hates me. I fucking hate Ubuntu. It's a mutual relationship. I could not, for the life of me, get it to fucking update. I don't know why. It just wouldn't do it. Um, I think like, I followed the instructions. Like, I, like I'm not an instruction follower usually. Like, I know usually what I'm doing when, at least when it comes to updating a fucking Linux operating system. I know how to do it. I do it a lot. Couldn't do it. Like, so I. I Looked up a tutorial, followed the fucking instructions. It still wouldn't happen. So it's still on 20 out of 4. The script still won't work. So I was like, screw this. I'll just use Docker. I have no clue what the hell I'm doing when it comes to Docker. So I Googled a tutorial. There's There are 3,000 different tutorials on how to install GitLab in Docker. Every mm -hmm. single one of them is different. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're all different. Uh, and... That varies, too, based on what operating system you're using. Not just what operating system, but what version of the operating system you're using. So I had to look up for specific tutorials for 20.04. And I found some. And again, they were all different. Uh, and, well, let's just... To the point where I got... So I got Docker installed. I got Docker up and running so that it... You know, and enabled the service and everything. Did the reboot. Added the user to... Added my user to the Docker group so that I didn't have to use sudo all the damn time. Uh, and then and um, added the environment variable that it asked for, created the directories that it needed, said it needed to be created, 
all of which were different in every single tutorial, by the way. Some of them having you having you add the the directories to the .srv uh, folder in root. Some of them just had you create a directory in your home directory. Who knows which one is right? I don't know. Uh, because even the official Ubuntu... So, okay, so I wanted to use the official tutorial on the Docker website for Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. But they use 18.04, not 20.04. Oh, my fuck. Right. So, <laughs> I was like, you want to know what? I got to the point where it needed me to change the SSH keys for the system. That's where I stopped this morning. And... I think I've talked about this before, but I don't know jack shit about SSH. I've never... You, I, okay, so that's a lie. I did use SSH like back in like 2009 or something like that in order to SSH into an iPhone when I jailbroke the damn thing. That's the only time I've successfully SSH'd into anything. It's just one of those things where I've just never done it. I'm sure I could do it after I learned, but I've never done it. I love the fact that the only time that you've used SSH is in a use case where 99% of people have never done that. 99% of people have never SSH'd into an iPhone. Well, the, the thing is, they have a tool for SSHing into an iPhone. And I think it's called like Crazy Fish or something like that. It was really easy. It was just a couple button presses. There was no getting... That was before my Linux time, so I was... It was not if I had to get into a terminal or something and change this stuff. I have no clue how to do it. In a... uh, anyways, that is where I stopped. So I did not get GitLab installed because I never got to that point. I did get Docker installed, so I have learned at least something out of this thing about at least installing Docker. Because I installed Docker like three times. I installed it on Garuda twice, I think. I installed it on Ubuntu, so I've now installed Dark Docker a couple times, and so I've learned that. I've also learned that we can't let Tyler do challenges anymore because he chooses hard ones, and I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to fail. <laughs> All right. Well, don't worry. I, uh, I, I'm I'm pretty sure everyone in here will agree that we both failed. I might have gotten my Docker image uh, or Docker container running um, limited and all of that, but I still didn't get to uh, to a GitLab repo uh, at all. I, I I can actually um, if if you uh, wanted it to or had it set up where I could share my screen, I could show you that like I do have the Docker container running. It's limited and everything, but that doesn't mean that I have GitLab instance up yet. So we definitely both failed at the GitLab challenge. You made it farther than I did. Um, I think the lesson that I really learned. And I'm pissed. I'm still pissed off that I didn't think about this. It's just to go into Linode and use the one app and one click install. Uh, I should. Somebody said in the comments below, uh, you should use the Docker Compose. I tried. Okay, I got to the point where it's, it's I'm pretty sure to, that's what I used. Like you still have to change the the SSH keys or whatever. And I hadn't. I mean, I have. I could have looked it up, but I was running out of time. Okay, you got to remember. This probably would have been all fine if I'd started three weeks ago when we decided we were going to do this challenge, because then I would we have had both to... procrastinated here. Yeah, the fact both. that I waited until the last fucking minute really uh, increased my stress level. So there was another lesson: don't wait till the last minute. <laughs> also, I learned my lesson: don't lie and act like you've got it fine because <laughs> you don't. All right, see. Where that came from, and, and I'm going to, is because in our original challenge, you thought I was fucking with you every time I said you were going to do better than me. You, and you still think probably that I was messing with your head because I mm -hmm. did end up winning that by the poll, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just going to rub that in a little bit, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was really close. Okay. And, you know, I wasn't messing with you. I really honestly thought you were going to do way better than me. Uh, so you thought that you had to mess with my head this time. Um, mm -hmm. The the lesson you should learn is that I didn't wasn't messing with your head in the first place. <laughs> so so don't don't bite off more than you can chew because next time I will mess with your head and say something stupid. I don't know. I, I'll have to come up because all right. When you want know we're gonna talk a lot of smack about that rising wars thing we're gonna do because. I'm gonna kick your yeah. ass in the rising war. I'm just gonna. I doubt you. it, bro. I, <laughs> I don't think you can, man. Oh, it's. It, it, <laughs> I got I, it. 
here's the thing. I've already won, man. I've already won. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it is on your channel, so is it rigged? Well, you want to know what? Well, is it rigged? Like, all right, Mr. Trump, how much you we can put it on both of our channels, okay? We'll we'll, we'll figure out. What, I mean, we still haven't figured out how to how to record that yet. This so, is, if you're hearing it now. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. This is fake, fake news <laughs> coming, coming from <laughs> coming from Matt. All right. Oh, okay. So, what else should we talk about in this Linux? Well, we we did we haven't gotten to the apps of the week yet. That that's another thing, right? We've only been going for thirty eight minutes. If we only did a podcast for thirty eight minutes, they'd think something was wrong with us. I mean, obviously true, we're true. sick. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do the apps of the week. But in the chat, if you have questions, uh, now is the time to ask your questions. We'll do a a, a ten or twenty minute Q and A uh, session after the apps of the week. So if you have questions, uh. Leave them in the chat. If you are watching this post uh, live stream, uh, I'm I will try to leave. We'll try to write the or read the questions out because I still don't have it set up so you can see the chat. Actually, not, there's no reason why. I mean, seriously, Matt, you have workspaces for a reason. <laughs> what I can do is when we well, do the Q just so you know now, if you're watching on a phone. It does overlay the chat and also like um, for me on my phone, it splits the like the video into a portion of the screen and yeah. six, 16 by nine. I get the chat. Right. If you're watching this post, uh, or at least on the, at least the video, if you're if, if you're doing this in the audio version, uh, you're just going to have to rely on us, you know, talking out the questions. Um, but if you're watching video, once we take start taking questions, I will switch to the chat so you can actually see us. You won't see our faces anymore, but you'll at least be able to see the questions. That makes more sense. Okay. Like, why do I have to mix things so hard? <laughs> right. Anyways, uh, apps of the week. Tyler, what is your app of the week? My app of the week is Docker. <laughs> what we were talking about. <laughs> because I... I just want people to know, even though Docker was not um, a successful part of this challenge, uh, Docker does make getting uh, more complex things set up. Like me and Dylan were able to get my Docker container set up in like 15 minutes. Um, setting up Nextcloud in Docker took at most two to three. Uh, downloading the Docker container for Nextcloud was the longest part. Um, I missed that part where you said you had help, by the way. Uh, <laughs> you cheater. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only thing that Dylan really helped me out with was because um, he was he was trying a different method of, uh, of setting up a GitLab container in Docker. But um, he helped me out in getting the uh, finding the flags for uh, limiting the CPU and memory usage. Yeah. Um, I don't really care if you got help. I was just I'm more no. upset that I didn't think of it first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you do have a Discord server filled with people. I, mean. I know, but I, I was trying to be a good challenge person, not go out and cheat like a cheating cheater. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't consider it cheating if if like you talk with other people and you like get advice. Now, if you if I had Dylan set up the Docker container for me, yeah, that's cheating. <laughs> that's like going into a casino, counting some cards and saying, I don't consider it cheating. I just consider it math, you know? <laughs> you gotta see the movie. <laughs> okay. Anyways. I mean, you might be right there, though. <laughs> uh, that right. might be how I see it. <laughs> it's okay. It's all a matter of perspective. So my uh, pick of the week this week is Garuda Linux. Um, so everybody knows I switched from Arco to Garuda for stupid reasons because I was trying to fix the hardware problem. It didn't work. But I have to say I have really been enjoying my time on on Garuda. The um. They have some really cool tools that they bake in, kind of similar to what Manjaro does, but these are more extensive. Um, things like that allow you to change kernels, things that allow you to... There's a whole thing for clearing your cache or uh, th thing. There's um, there's a there's an entire like um, 
console, not a console thing, but like a, an entire application that allow you to just do a ton of different things. Kind of reminds me of what MX does with their, with their tweak tool. Uh, but these are kind of more separate and stuff. And, and what's really cool is if you, if you bork your system, uh, like you delete some applications or whatever that were originally installed, you can go through and just reinstall all the original applications with the click of a button. So that's really cool. Um, I also love, uh, so this is kind of like a separate pick, so I'm kind of doing two, but they're related. Uh, I've been loving ButterFS lately. Just ButterFS is is really, really good. And the way Garuda sets it up and allows you to just do snapshots. You, you can do the snapshots directly from Grub if you need to. Like if you if, Dang, okay. if you're not even able to get into your system and you but you can get to Grub, you can get to all of your snapshots right there from Grub, and it's really really cool. Um, now I haven't had to use it yet, so I don't know how well it works, but I'm assuming it works just as well as everything else does. Um, so so ButterFS is really good on Garuda, and I'm at the point now. I think ButterFS should just be the standard for Linux. I really do. I mean, ext4 is good and it's really, really stable. It's probably more stable than ButterFS or BetterFS, whatever the fuck you want to call it. But the tools that ButterFS gives you for snapshotting and stuff and and reverting your system back is just, I mean, in, invaluable. And I don't understand why. I mean, ZFS is really good, right? I mean, every, it's been around for a long time. A lot of people use it. But the tools for ZFS aren't nearly as well baked. At least I don't think so. So I don't know why Ubuntu doesn't use ButterFS instead. It just it seems like a better choice for a desktop system. ZFS works, yep. I think, probably way better on the server. Uh, so that's probably why they chose it because Ubuntu is actually primarily a server distribution. But I think that ButterFS would be better for... Just you know, desktop. Desktop, desktop, yeah. It's, it's just so good. Uh, just that it's kind of like having really good insurance, like good health insurance. You know, just, yeah. Like you, you hate paying for it, but you, it's really nice to have because if you break your leg and you need to go to the doctor, you don't have to worry about you know having to pay for it. It's kind of like that. Like I haven't had to use it yet, but just the fact that ButterFS is there taking snapshots every time I do an update just makes me so much more secure about this whole installation of Linux. Like I know if something fucks up, I can go back. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a really good feeling. All right. What we're going to do now is move on to the uh, question and answer session. So if you've answered, if you asked some questions, uh, I also see another super chat here. So um, I'm going to, Umka, thank you for the super chat. We really do appreciate that. And I'm going to switch to the main screen now so people can actually see this. Man, no camera. That's the one that I'm looking for. Okay. So um, we, we do have some questions here if we can scroll up. So Tyler... If you find some questions you want to answer, answer as well, you can just shout them out as well. Right. Um, uh, Tim Jones asks, do you guys have experience setting up um, monitor color calibration? And uh, he said, I can calibrate, but not get the IYHRE profile to load. Start. I don't have any experience with color calibration at all. No. Uh, I just yeah, I don't either. I know that they have those spider things that you attach to your monitor to, to uh, that will go through and like do it from hardware wise, but I don't know anything about software calibration. No, yeah, same. Uh, let's see here. Uh, how do I enable dark mode on the new Linux Mint website? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm assuming, do they have a dark mode? Like like a built-in dark mode? Or, I mean, I'm... I have no idea. Um, like, I'm looking now. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to go hunting. This, I mean... I mean, I don't see a button here for dark mode or anything. Links... Uh, about project. No, I don't. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that there is a dark mode for like an official. But you could use something like that. Um, what's the name of that extension, Tyler? That allows you to. Oh, do there dark are mode? so many of them. If oh, you yeah. just search dark mode on any, like either yeah. 
Chrome extensions or Firefox extensions. So that's what I'm going to say you have to do is download an extension to get that dark mode. But here, uh, no, Immortality it. asked, did you like Emacs? And we need a number out of 10. Um, 2BD, TBD. <laughs> uh, all right, so all right, I'm going to make a video about this either today or tomorrow. I have a, I'm going to need to put a video up, so I haven't decided. But just a sneak peek. Uh, I used vanilla Emacs for like a day. I hated the key bindings, and like I understand that you can change the key bindings. I understand this, but I'm not that interested in using Emacs to uh, to the point where I want to go through and change the the key bindings. I haven't got that point. Yeah, I haven't got that interested in it yet. So, uh, I, what I decided to do was install. Doom Emacs. So I have Doom Emacs here installed. And for those of you watching the video, you can even see I even have it attached to a key binding so I can open it up right away. Um, what I'm finding right now, and you gotta remember, I haven't delved too deeply into it, is that uh, I'm just using it like Vim. Like it has the Vim key binding, so I just use it like Vim. Uh, it's only been a few days. So I haven't got into org mode. I haven't got into any of the stuff that I want to get into that associates it with like VimWiki so because uh, there are alternatives to VimWiki for Emacs and I want to try those out but I haven't had the chance yet so once I start treating it more like Emacs and less like Vim I think I'll have a better experience if I had to give a definitive answer to how I like Emacs right now I would just say that I would rather use Vim because that's basically what I'm using it as anyways um all right so um is there life after Firefox dies so th that was from Umka um, I hate Google Chrome, Chromium, and overall WebKit-based browsers. They feel like missing some uh, sort of control for me. So, uh, we've talked about this before. That um, Mozilla is probably in trouble, right? But mm -hmm. I, I, maybe you agree with this, maybe you don't. But I think that if Mozilla was to pay all their money to their CEO and no longer have any money... Um, that somebody would fork Firefox. It would just be a very much smaller project and it would lose a ton of users. It would just become a community project. And I don't know if you can make a community project browser that's actually any good. No. Um, I mean, well, I mean, I think the only thing that... Key Browser oh, has done it, but it, their user base is so small. You know, mm -hmm. so what other... What, what other... And they, they, they don't make their own engine. So... Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that that's what I was about to say. Like, without the money that Firefox has, I don't think you can... I don't think you can actually develop a web engine. Like, I, I just don't think you can. All right, like, so the, the web engine itself is open source. So I no. wonder if so, if somebody couldn't... So, like, if they wanted to fork the... Um, the Chromium web engine, or, you know, Blink, or whatever it's called. They wanted to fork that. And uh, make you know, make that the Firefox web engine. I I don't know, like I I'm not sure. Maybe we won't ever have to see that future, and Mozilla will get their act together. But I think that it's always going to be a smaller project. I just don't know that there are the people. I don't think there are enough people with the skill set of developing a web in a web engine that necessarily have the um free time to do it um for free yeah like I, also there's i mean if you can develop a web engine there's so much money made like yeah i mean if you have the talent to develop a web engine you're probably getting paid money to work at google exactly I mean, that's the thing there's a reason why the other operating other browsers brave vivaldi opera they all use the Google Web Engine. There's a reason why they do that is because they don't they 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 don't want to put their resources into that because it just doesn't make sense for them. Yeah, it, well, I mean, it's just it's it's not worth it. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I, I mean, if anyone keeps up with my channel, I know I've been while I'm pretty sure I have a dedicated video talking about it. Like, we don't need new browsers like screw new browsers we don't freaking need one we need 
a new web engine, a fully open source web engine that can be developed by a community in their spare time and be com- and be like not not necessarily competitive, but competent. And I don't know that we can get that. Um, a buddy has just woke up from his nap and it's like, I mean, just ready to go. How you doing, buddy? We ain't done yet, bud. All right. <laughs> oh, we're not that we're not far away. Uh, Crazy Chicken uh, is the troll of the week. Here's a good question. Install Gen 2. Uh, <laughs> Fantastic thanks, question, as always. Uh, yep. Um, let's see here. Um, you, we already asked that one. Uh, Umka says ButterFS is smooth like butter. Uh, that's funny. Uh, the pr- biggest problem with ButterFS is they don't know what the fuck their name is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, is it ButterFS? Is it you know ButterFS? I mean, nobody really knows. Um, so let's see here. Um, any chance to go with OpenBox? I have never used OpenBox in my entire life. I, that's one of the few window managers that I've never tried. What about you, Tyler? You've ever used OpenBox before? No. Um, well, maybe. Well, video ideas, man. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Uh, wait, never mind. OpenBox is the uh, floating window manager that, um, like, it, it, it. It's the one where you click on the desktop and you get the drop down menu, like ta- like task menu. Mm-hmm. I, I, th- I think yeah, I think that's what I was. I I used to use it uh, back in the day when I used Crunch or Crunchbang Linux. I don't I don't know if you remember that distro. I um, vaguely. I think I ended up using open. I think that LXDE. I think LXDE used to use OpenBox as its window manager. So maybe technically I have used it, but I haven't used it on its own. Uh, it used to be installed on every Arco system I had, but I just never logged into it. Um, maybe someday. Um, Dude, it's been so long since I used Open. So I almost forgot what Box was. At first, I thought it, I, I thought you were talking about something like because I know there's something to do with VMs that's similar to Open Box, and I'm not talking about Virtual Box. Yes, I know that's, that's different. <clears throat> All right, so we're just looking for another question here. Anybody? We need questions. Oh, uh, Astro Lol said, uh, uh, "When you installing OpenBSD?" Uh, uh, maybe someday. Uh, Denton asks, uh, "Do you guys hate flat packs or just snaps?" Uh, I'm gonna answer answer that question. Just snaps. I actually don't mind flat packs. I don't think the syntax for flat packs is all that great, but they're definitely better than snaps. Like miles and way better. I'll just be your hype man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Screw snap facts. Snap, or snap was, shit. Oh, snaps. They, could, they could call it. If they changed the name of snaps to snack packs, I'd, I'd be all for it. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never do that, though. Um, Arch yeah. says LibreWolf. The problem with LibreWolf is that it's based on Firefox. The, the, the LibreWolf guys don't do any of their development, they just pull stuff out of Firefox to make their browser. Um, I mean, like the the only thing that I'm with where I will legitimately give Brave a real shot, and I might even invest in Bat just because of this decision. If Brave comes out, I don't care. Like they don't have to like just make it and like integrate it into Brave immediately. But if Brave comes out and they're like, we're making a web engine at that point, I'm like, oh, game's on. At that point, I'll start using Brave. I might seriously invest in Bat at that point because if they're gonna take the if they're going to be the ones to at least um, try to be uh, innovative in the space, yeah, I'll I don't, support that. I don't think that they're ever going to do it, though. I, I think that no. they're too invested in just... I mean, can we be honest and just say Brave is just Chrome? What exactly, other than pulling some Firefox stuff and changing the, the layout of the settings page, does Brave actually do? Uh, besides they have their that, own search engine. Well, yeah, but that's not part of the browser. That's a separate thing. I'm talking about just the browser. Well, I mean, it is part of the browser. Like, I mean, I mean it's you, default in the browser. Sure. That mean, I mean, then does that mean that Bing is the is part of the browser for Firefox? I mean, if that's, I mean, okay. No, 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 no. But Bing is definitely part of Edge. Right, but I mean, it. It's not though. It's I think. All right. It doesn't matter. The, the, <laughs> Sorry. The, it's okay. Well, 
the thing with Brave is I don't know what they have done to make their browser unique from Chrome other than add in a bunch of crypto nonsense. Like, the, supposedly they have an ad blocker, but their ad blocker is terrible. Like, well, I mean, their ad blocker is their ad network. Right. So they have, they block ads, but they miss like half of them. Every time I install Brave, I still have to install uBlock Origin in order to get the 30% of the ads that they miss. Okay. And you still, and if you turn on their ads or whatever that you get in the little pop up, whatever, uh, which is fine. I mean, I don't, I don't begrudge anybody making money. Uh, but I mean, it's just every single one of those advertisements that I've ever, ever seen is some kind of financial advice thing or cryptocurrency ad. I mean, it's just weird. I don't know what kind of value they've added to uh, Chrome at all because it's basically it's just Chrome. I mean, it, with, with some privacy settings. Yeah. Okay. Um. Can the rice wars be based on X Monad? Oh God, you no crazy no. chicken, crazy chicken. Why do you hate me so much? I mean, seriously, man. What did I ever do to you? <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's too like, like that. Yeah, that yeah, made me pretty stressed out there for a second. I was like, I can't do that. I, I cannot. I now see no. the thing is, I could do it, but I don't want to. <laughs> you know, it, it wouldn't be an, the, the thing about the race wars that we're going to do is that I really want it to be enjoyable for both of us. And uh, if we chose a an, a desk or a window manager that neither one of us enjoy. It would just be pain, you know. <laughs> we just had a challenge that was nothing but pain. We don't need to. <laughs> we don't um, need a repeat right off the bat. Uh, Astral All says I've never installed a Snap or Flatpak or whatever, and I've been using Linux for nine months. Uh, I'm assuming you never use Ubuntu then, because a lot of times in, in Ubuntu, if you install something, you may be installing the Snap and n not even know it. Because uh, you can install like Chromium or Firefox pretty soon, or several others that Gimp, just yeah OBS. they just default to snaps. Uh, it looks like you're installing from apt, but you're really installing the snap. Mm. Um, LQ Larry asked, uh, "Music player, do you prefer?" And quite frankly, for me, it's going to be CMUS. I know you're different. Yeah, I use NCM PCPP or whatever the hell it's called, uh, which is a front end for MPD. And uh, I love it, but I would not recommend it to anybody else. Uh, just be just because it's a pain in the ass to set up. And it really, really is. I'd uh, recommend CMOS. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I've never cared for the looks of the CMOS, but I've tried it before. Uh, honestly... I'm at the point now where I don't listen to music much on my desktop anyways. I've been I subscribed to Deezer for a year. Uh so I've been trying to get my money's worth out of that. Mm -hmm. Uh cuz I got a good deal. I got it like for like 80 bucks. Ooh. Um so that was uh that was that. Um my first distro was Arch and then Gen 2. Uh Astral said that. Um My first distro was Solus. What was your first distro, Tyler? <clears throat> my first distro was Ubuntu. I have no idea the version. It you're, was... such, you're such a vanilla person. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried Ubuntu and then I moved on to uh, Zorin OS, mm -hmm. like right after that, which was really interesting because, like, Zorin back in the day, like, Zorin has gotten to the point now where it's like actually pretty decent but like dude when i tried out zorin like i i it was a challenge to stick with it i think i stuck with it for a few months oh it was such a pain back in the day we, we should do a, a, a an episode on zorin because i have a lot of opinions about them uh miguel asks uh what's your favorite key manager i'm not sure what you mean do you mean like key key binding manager like sxhkd uh, in that in that case, my favorite one is SXHKD, despite the fact that it's a horrible name. Um, Brandon says CMUS is ugly. I, I agree with that. But I think you can change the look and feel of CMUS, can't you, Tyler? Yes. So you, you can yeah. you can theme CMUS just like you can theme anything else. But the default mm -hmm. look, yes, it is ugly. It looks like CMUS looks to like... To me, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
it's uh, so Seamus weird. looks like Midnight Commander <sighs> without the theming. Racing the mutter window manager. <laughs> that's just that's just. Can, is it? Can you you can't just run mutter? Can you? I have no idea. I don't even know I, what mutter is. Mutter is the window manager for GNOME. Oh no 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 no! no. There's, There's no, no part of no 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 no. I I mean I don't th I'm I'm pretty sure mutter is still baked into GNOME or I mean it might be. But I mean, does, no, you does you would window have window to run it because the, the window, window manager it, it's definitely going to need like stuff like the like I mean the panels are going to need different parts of GNOME like everything's so neatly tied in that you, you there's no way right. But doesn't don't other um buddy I hear you man don't other um desktop environments use Mutter. Uh, I have no idea. Um, we're gonna look at Win Wikipedia and see if uh, Mutter is the fork muffin. So Linux Mint has fork Mutter and use uses muffin, which is a fork. Hmm. Um, but I don't see any other. I don't see any other uh, use kit uses of it anywhere else. So it's just GNOME. So I guess I don't know how you'd pull it out and just run it on its own. Rice Emacs. Uh, right now I'm just focusing on using Emacs. Uh, let's see here. Any? Oh, Miguel was talking about password manager. My favorite password manager is Bitwarden. Uh, you do you use Pass? Is that what you use, Tyler? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, I use I use Bitwarden. Uh, Gavin says that there are other web engines that get less development. But, I mean, are they any good? I don't even know. I mean, most of them I've never heard of. Uh, Hyper says he started his Linux journey with Void. Um, Ooh. Void's well, pretty um, good. Yeah, I, I uh, we all know my experiences with Void. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, the the problem with that though is is you get you get used to run it, and then you go to like almost every other distro in the world that's using System D, and you're like, uh, what's going on here? I'm gonna put up a poll and ask how many people have ever even interacted with their with their init system, because I bet you the vast majority of Linux users probably have never even touched their init system. I mean, the, the, you're probably right. The, the normies, um, because I, I mean, even as like I consider myself an advanced Linux user, but I even know that more. I mean, that's kind of a lie because there's more people that use. Linux that are much more advanced than I ever will be, but at my current level of Linux usage, I hardly ever use interact with the Init system. Like maybe once every few months. Like maybe. Like I only just recently did it, like in the last couple of days, because we were trying to get you know GitLab up installed. But uh, prior to that, I couldn't even tell you when the last time I was when I you know enabled a System D uh, service. Oh, I do it all the time. Do you? Yeah. I mean, not like on a regular basis, but, you know, like, you know, every time I in install Arch or pretty much most distributions, I'm starting up some type of service uh, for liquid CTL. I have to make a have to, but I make a system, uh, a system D service for um, starting that up and setting it all up, controlling fan speed and colors. Um. G I'm just going to call you GL because I don't uh, know how you're going to pronounce your name with a zero in the middle of it. So um, he asked if we if I do a comparison between i3 and Sway. Uh, Sway is one of those things that I've been very stubborn about because I wanted to do a Sway video, but I don't want to do it in a VM. And trying to record in Sway from OBS has proven to be beyond me. But <laughs> uh, maybe eventually, yes. 
Um, System B is causing some issues with Hyper's computer. I'm, 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 I do apologize for that. Um, as if it was my fault. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know how I would diagnose something that was uh, caused by system D because I don't even know that that would be the problem. Because I mean, I used to use the system D services a lot more when I was trying to run a Plex server because you have to have the Plex server service running in the background. Uh, so I was doing that a lot, but after that point, uh, I never, I hardly ever interact with it. Glowsec. Okay, I appreciate that. I will, I will now know how to pronounce your name. Uh, the numbers in people's names always mess, mess with me. Uh, and yes, I3 and Sway are very similar, but their bars are not. Their bars are completely different. Uh, <laughs> Alright, hold on a second. we got to change that so you can, people can actually see. <laughs> uh, but he's playing ball. <laughs> I think that means he's time for some attention. He's so excited. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I think we're gonna wrap that up because I think Buddy's ready for Tyler's attention. <laughs> if we miss your question, we do apologize because it's really hard to keep track of stuff in um uh in the YouTube chat because it jumps around so much. So if we did if we did yeah. miss your if you miss questions, so we do apologize for that. Um, Hyper says X monad out of the box is not really that complicated. Um. For me, I didn't have that bad of a time with, it. but I did also have DT in my chat when I was live streaming about. Yeah, that's oh. like having the creator of X Monad in your chat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so he, apparently the X Monad developer has gone through, and they've released a new version of X Monad and X Mobar. I just got a tweet about this today from the developer, and apparently the uh, it's going to be an easier process for getting the bar up and running from now on. So uh, maybe I'll give that a try again. Uh, I I did have problems with the bar, but what I really ended up having problems was with scratch pads. So. <laughs> And, and that as we all problem. know, you got to have your scratch uh, pads I, 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 and I workspaces. I can't live without those two things. And, and key cords, man. Key cords. Now, x does a fantastic job with key cords, but uh, I can't stand Haskell. Like, I, I, I hate it with a passion, with like a, a, a burning passion. I hate it. And it hates me just as much, by the way. It, like, it's, it's, a, it's a mutual two-way street, that <laughs> hatred. Um Anyway, so that is it for us this time. Before I go, I think I'm going to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is Fun 2, Patrick L, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Typhoon, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, j Dog, and the BSDs Rock. Uh, coming up next week. Uh, coming up next week. Uh, what Coming up next week. <laughs> what are we doing next week? Oh, next week we're going to be talking about the most underrated distro. So that'll be fun. Now, if you are a patron... And you would like to hear me wax on for about 45 minutes about that topic. That is already up as a patron exclusive. That was the the lost episode that will never see the public's eyes. So you can support us and hear that episode by going to patreon.com slash linuxcast. Uh, and that should be a fun episode. So we will definitely have fun doing that. And I'm going <coughs> to... Cough and just ears. a little bit of shameless self-promotion here. Um, as soon as I'm done playing with Buddy, there will be a live stream uh, for Zero AD. So if you want to watch that, definitely uh, you know keep an eye out for it. And uh, you're also more than welcome to come and join my Discord, which you can find over on my channel, and you can play it with us. More Indeed, players. You should, you should definitely join Tyler's Discord. Uh, the Linux Cast does have a Discord as well, but it's not nearly as active because everybody just hangs out on Tyler's Discord. Um, <laughs> It, but it's okay it's much it's a much more fun fun and happy place uh anyways uh thank you everybody for watching uh we will uh see you next time